Hey everybody, welcome back to Jennifer's Garden. So, some exciting news. We ordered some chicks from Meyer Hatchery. I'm really excited. I actually popped on Meyer Hatchery's website uh, last week, week before, and uh, I wanted to show my coworkers the chicks that I was gonna buy and then realized that um, they were pretty much almost sold out. So, after I freaked out, lost my mind, I came home from work, I sat down and went through everything, and I was able to find the chicks that I wanted. A couple of them were actually the last ones. So I ended up buying chicks one month earlier than I would ever imagine I would buy chicks. So I figured it is what it is. Uh, when uh, life's give, life gives you lemons, you just make lemonade, right? So we switch things up. So if you've been following along with me at all, I had this big, huge plan to expand my chicken yard, put the playhouse in it, let the girls go broody, and then buy the chicks. Well, that's not going to happen this year. Everybody wants to buy chicks, and it has been absolutely crazy. So I did want to do part of this video and show people exactly what you need for a setup for a chick brooder. So we ended up putting it in our living room here since it's still chilly here in upstate New York and you know we got 14 inches of snow the other day but this is what you get so we put it in the living room for now we I have everything set up you should always get your chick brooder set up and ready to go before your chicks come you want to make sure that you have everything you need the only thing left I need to do is put water in the water feeder and the food in the food feeder. That's it. Everything's set up. I will turn the heat on and go as soon as the post office calls me and tells me that they're here. So it's perfect. So we ended up getting the bigger pine shavings because we are inside the house and they're a lot less dusty. For heat, you absolutely 100% have to have heat for these chicks we go with these brooder heaters. They can go underneath and it's heated from the top so it mimics like a real chicken. These little uh, holders on the side, as the chicks get bigger, I can raise it up one more. It does go down um, one more, but with the pine shavings, they're kind of fluffy, so I put it on the middle one. I'll adjust it as I need it. I definitely did not want to use a heat lamp. Why? These are flying animals. They are poultry. They are birds. Anything could happen. Something could hit that bulb and it shatters, catches your house on fire, you're toast. You'll lose your house. You'll lose your birds. It's just, just something I don't want to do. Plus, if you have the heat lamp on, the heat lamp is on 24-7. Chickens, go up to roost at night, right? So why not right off the bat, granted I'll have a lamp on for these chicks for the first few days or so, just so they have a tiny bit of light so they can eat throughout the night. But given three or four days or a week or so, lights out at night. They're gonna go to sleep, they're gonna get used to darkness at night because that's what chickens do. That's what they're used to, right? So that's the heater. I actually have two of them, so when my other batch of chickens come next week, we might need the two, but maybe not. Here is our waterer. It's just a little guy. I think this is a quart size, quart and a half or so. Uh, the biggest thing with the water that you have, they have fresh water, fresh clean water every day. For the first week or so, I put these little rocks in the bottom, if you can see because these little buggers, they will drown <laughs> if uh, they, there's nothing there to stop them. So put the rocks in there for about a week and you'll be fine. You'll know, they'll be big enough where they won't be able to drown in there. And we have the little feeder and we'll put the food in there. I mean, I think this is, let's see if I can get back far enough. This is a pretty good size. 
It's like four and a half feet in a circle. And it also has this uh, zipper top. That was something that I really wanted so that when, because the chicks are going to be in here uh, <laughs> a lot longer than I ever expected them to be. So that way I can zip the top um, and they will stay inside and they won't fly out like they did with our other brooders. We do have a three season front porch that shortly, we, we have another batch of chickens coming next week. We ended up ordering 20 altogether. But to get the chickens that I wanted, I had to do them in two orders. So, like I said, it is what it is. So, sh about a week after we get those chickens, so maybe in about three weeks, we will put uh, the chicks out on the three-season front porch. They'll be fine. We'll keep the front door open. It will be heated out there. They will still have their brooders, brooder heaters, and it will be fine. Um, the food... I know there's a lot of controversy out there about the chicken food, but I'm going to say, please feed them chick starter, crumble, something, chick food. Please. If you're worried about the food in your area, you're making your own chicken food, you do whatever you feel is comfortable for you. But when it comes to the chicks, it has to be pretty specific. They are on 20% protein, so they need so much more protein than an adult chicken does. So if you're not comfortable with the commercial chicken food, go to your local feed store, talk to them, ask them what brands they use. And even if then you're not so comfortable, just buy the most expensive brand from your local feed store. You will be fine. I use the Do More brand, and that is part of Purina. Purina makes that. And I know that's part of the problem that some people are having. But I haven't had that problem. My chickens have been laying eggs all winter long. Obviously not like they do in the summer, but they have been laying eggs. So I think it's area specific. So you do what you think is best. But when it comes to the chicks, please, please feed them chick food. <laughs> So, I did want to do this video before the chicks come because they could come anywhere, anytime. Tomorrow, Wednesday, or, or Thursday. Tomorrow's Tuesday. <laughs> so, they're coming literally any day. And I can't wait to see these fluffy butts. And I will go through and show you which chick is which. Hopefully, hopefully I can tell them apart. I mean, we've got uh, one blue Orpington. Uh, what else is coming? Uh, four olive acres and then seven brown leghorns. <laughs> so I'll do some more videos about the different chickens and which ones are nice and which ones are naughty. Well, the leghorns aren't naughty, so to speak. They just don't like to be around people. Nah, they're a nervous breed. But I tell you what, if you want chickens to lay eggs, the leghorns are the ones you want. But I would like a mix in there that are very nice, very calm, very loving chickens, which the Orpingtons are, but they are very broody. So we'll uh, get more into that coming up soon. All right, so we got our second batch of chickens. It's uh, been an interesting, hello. It's been a long week. <laughs> we haven't had the greatest of weather, so um, it's been a little bit of a struggle getting them here. But I wanted to just kind of show you the difference between the two batches of chicks. These chicks I picked up this morning, so they are pretty tired, they had a long, Couple of days, poor Lavi. That's my lavender Orpington. Um, we we had a really bad snowstorm yesterday, so they were supposed to come yesterday, but they spent an extra day in the truck. So, um, well, we ended up with five out of eight. So 
I'm thankful that we got what we got, but here we are. So the first, um, the first group, I ordered 12 and I got 13. Now these girls, I want to set this up so I can <clears throat> show you. Because as soon as I open this, they are, look at them. They're already ready. They see this brown blanket and they think it's like dirt. So they definitely try to do a dust bath in here. So I've got, I, I got one blue Orpington and one lavender Orpington. So I'm going to show you the difference. Let's see if I can set this up right. Because they are so funny. You ready? They're waiting. They are waiting. <clears throat> what do you think? You want to show off? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I show off for everybody? So, I would like to see if little Lavi can come out. Come here, Lavi. I want to show you the difference. Oh, here. Maybe I can put you over here so I can. What? Uh, there's blue. This is blue. This is the blue Orpington. <laughs> I'm so original with my names. This, where are we? This one is an Olivegger. Hey, 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 come over here. And this little flighty girl, these are the brown leghorns. Where's Labby? Oh, she, she's seeping. Come here, just for... Come here, baby. I know, I know, I know, I gotcha. So here is the Lavender Orpington. She was hatched uh, two days ago. And then... Come here, Blue. Show me. I know. And then here's Blue. She's a week older. Look at the difference. Isn't this so funny? They grow so big in a week. Oh, yes, I know. And, all right, put you back under. Hi, you want to be an example? <laughs> this is an X checker leghorn. I highly doubt I'm going to get it. Come here. There's one leghorn that will let me pick her up. It's okay. One week apart. They're both leghorns. <laughs> what a difference. Oh, sorry. You want to say hi to everybody? I know you've had such a long couple days, haven't you, sweetie? I know. I'm sorry that snowstorm delayed you, but she's been chilling out underneath the heater, getting warm. And just napping, huh? Little groggy. But they're so cute. I can't wait to see you. They look like, I call them cookies and cream. Because they're black, like black and white. Like a, like a little checkerboard. They're so funny. <clears throat> and olive acre. I got four olive acres. And they're pretty gray. It's really funny. So the olive eggers are not true bred chickens. The Orpingtons are. The Leghorns are. Huh. But even just the difference between the Orpington and the olive eggers. Boy, such a big breed, but I didn't want, well, I wanted the Lavender Orpington. That was my main goal. I just wanted one. I don't need a dozen of them. I love Orpingtons, don't get me wrong, because they are so nice and I have eight buffs. But man, they are broody and I work all day and it's too hot in the summer and I don't have a rooster, so I have absolutely no need for my girls to go broody. Again, my plan was to wait and wait for some of my girls to go broody in a separate um, outdoor run area. I'd have a little house for them and then order chicks and then slip them underneath, but I, there's, yeah, well, there are no chicks to be had in, oh, hi, hi, boo, no chicks to be had, 
So I ordered all of these from Meyer Hatchery. I mean, they were wonderful. Huh. I got the last blue Orpington and the last lavender Orpington. So, and that's all I wanted. Just one of each. So we got a whole bunch of leghorns. Why? Because leghorns lay a lot, a lot of eggs. And I have never had a problem. Oop, sorry. I've never had a problem with a leghorn being broody. So, and the olive eggers are nice birds from what I hear. They're calm. They're nice. I just wanted, you know, a handful of chickens that I can handle and I can love on and they love me. Right, Blue? And the rest can just go do their thing. <laughs> All right, so, hi, you want to come here? Because you're a big girl. You want to be, see? <gasps> Say hi. Say hi. It's blue. Yeah, we're almost hitting this teenager stage, huh? All right, say blue. Keep following us. We'll check out our, whoa, progress. <laughs> right? All right, well, from my coop to yours, thank you for growing with me so I can grow with you.